This home is our sanctuary. It's just been an interesting journey. Inside a home where so many memories were made. This was all Brit younger. Joe Tooney has almost finished packing. That's the smile. We light a room. Boxing up pictures. She was my girl. And memories of a life cut short. Brittany Tooney's life ended tragically in May 2020. 911, what's your emergency? There was a shooting on uh, North 18th Avenue and Boyd Street. We heard shots fire and he had a gun and the lady took off. And he shot at some lady that was parking him four times. Police say the father of Brittany's ex-boyfriend ambushed her and shot her at this intersection. Brittany escaped to this gas station. 911, what's the location of your emergency? Uh, the EMPM on Allen Street. What's going on there? Somebody shot in one of the cars. Police say her killer followed her and shot her again. 911. You have an active shooter right yeah. now at Arco AMPM. Yeah, we have lots of officers in the area, sir. Thank you. We pulled up to the site just a few minutes after that and uh, saw the police getting into her car and pulling her body up, her slumping over the console. Yeah, tough. The suspect, Scott Belinsky, killed himself before police got there. Brittany died despite taking so many steps to protect herself. She filed for and received a protective order against Belinsky. A judge prohibited him from being within 500 feet of Brittany. When you look at your daughter, do you feel like the system failed her? Severely failed her. Failed her and, and, and her daughter. Yeah, failed both of them badly. Failed you. Failed our family badly. Brittany is not the only victim who died in similar circumstances. There was Tiffany Hill in 2019, Erica Tomasina Lucas just this past June, Miche Melendez and her seven-year-old daughter earlier this year, that's just in southwest Washington. In Oregon, a 12-year-old boy in Clackamas County this year. Before that, a double murder-suicide in Washington County last November. All of the accused killers violated restraining orders or court order no contact orders. Do restraining orders do enough to protect victims of domestic abuse? No. I would unequivocally say no, um, because it's a piece of paper. Clark County Republican State Senator Linda Wilson sponsored legislation to strengthen no contact orders in 2020. The Tiffany Hill Act allowed judges to require ankle monitoring in certain domestic violence cases. It also gave victims a choice to opt in to a notification system. They get alerted if their alleged abuser gets within a certain distance. Tiffany Hill's estranged husband shot and killed her in a parking lot in 2019, despite an active restraining order. Do you think the ankle monitoring with the victim notification saves lives? I do believe, yes. Had she known, the, you know, had she had the technology, the alarm would have gone off, or he wouldn't have been there at all knowing that that alarm was going to go off as soon as he got there. Wilson says her intent was for the law to cover criminal cases. In other words, when police charge someone with a crime and they're let out of jail awaiting trial. The debate now, should Washington explicitly expand use of ankle monitors and victim notification in certain civil cases or times when police are not able to prove a crime, but a judge sides with someone asking for a protective order? Our system is catching a lot of endangered survivors and endangered women, and we're failing them miserably. State Representative Lauren Davis says yes. The Democrat from Shoreline is a survivor herself. What is one concrete step Washington lawmakers can take to make restraining orders more effective? Honestly, I, I do believe that electronic monitoring is the silver bullet there. Davis sponsors sweeping legislation this year to expand ankle monitoring with victim notification. It also requires what's called a lethality assessment in all domestic violence cases, civil or criminal. That's essentially finding out who's the most dangerous and monitoring them accordingly. The bill passed. However, both of those components were stripped out. Senator Wilson has concerns about ankle monitors in cases where people aren't charged with a crime. We really need to be careful about constitutional rights when we are going to do something as, as boldly as the monitoring.
However, she wants more judges and courts to use the technology in criminal cases. She's working on expanding judicial training on the Tiffany Hill Act across Washington. Vancouver area Democratic State Representative Sharon Wiley. Would you support efforts to expand ankle monitoring on people in domestic violence, civil and criminal cases? I'd certainly look at it real seriously. I think we need to do more than we're doing right now and restraining ours and ankle bracelets. Um, there have been cases um, everywhere where they, they would have helped. All three lawmakers support expanded lethality assessments to find out who's the most dangerous. Our system currently treats all DV the same. It treats DV as a monolith, and we are making no effort to segregate and segment out the most dangerous cases and treat those cases differently. Those lawmakers will find an ally in Joe Tooney. His goal is changing the system. We have to make it accountable. If there is a restraining order, and it is a serious thing, there has to be a way and means to make sure that these people are protected. Because just to arbitrarily say, we're giving this to you so you should feel protected, it's a fallacy. A fallacy advocates say fails too many victims.